So today we're going to talk about a really fun topic along the lines of data visualization. Um, and uh, it's a topic that I, I think we've learned because now we know a lot about the mechanics of how to plot data, right? Uh, and just because we know how to plot data doesn't mean that all plots are made equal. Um, and so this is a really interesting field that's emerged recently as a legitimate field of study known generally as data visualization. And it's not all about data visualization, because it's really about communication. And so what we're going to be talking about today is a set of best practices in terms of what is a good idea when you're trying to present data in the visual way. Um, so we're going to be talking about um, is known as data visualization. But really, the thing that you should be concentrating on is not the visualization part, but communication. So the goal here is not simply to make pretty graphs, although that's always nice. The goal here is communicating data to people. Emphasis on the people. You have to know your audience. And sometimes the people is yourself. Okay. And so some of these best practices are also applicable even if you're just plotting something intermediate just to convince yourself that something is happening. Okay? Um, so the, the, the field of data visualization really got its start uh, with this guy named Edward Tufte. Um, and he wrote this book back in 1982 that is entitled The Visual Display of Quantitative Information. It's now in second edition. Um, it's this large book that's actually pretty nice to have at your coffee table. It's a nice coffee table book. It has pretty pictures in it. Um, I highly recommend that you find a copy and uh, at least look at it, if not read it, because he really uh, did a really good job of codifying some of the ways that to think about how to visualize data, um, not just making things that are flashy and cool to look at, but actually communicating information. And how do you balance those sometimes not necessarily complementary goals? Okay? And so one of the things that Tufti um, is most famous for is uh, he coined the term chart junk. Okay? So this is an interesting term. Um, and um, it was born out of his uh, reading of a lot of newspapers and magazine articles written at the time that were people, illustrators who have uh, more of a background in art or design, but not very much quantitative training, would draw these pictures uh, that are really cool illustrations of something that's really quantitative. But what he noted was that sometimes they could actually be very misleading. Okay? And so he coined this term called the, the data ink ratio. Okay? So it's a data ink ratio. Okay? And it's defined as the amount of ink in the figure to convey data divided by the total ink to print that figure. Okay? So in the limit of really listening to Tufti and actually following everything that he says, he says that one must try to um, maximize this ratio as much as possible. So have as much of the figure devoted to the actual conveyance of information and communicating of data rather than just wasting ink printing a bunch of stuff that doesn't really do much good to anyone. Okay? And so uh, as an example of this, um, you've all seen these sorts of figures, I'm sure. Uh, where it's conveying something relatively simple. So um, let's say you have a bar graph, okay? But instead of plotting a bar graph, you go to your favorite uh, bar plot graphing um, software, and uh, you make it plot a bar graph, and it's going to plot a three-dimensional bar graph for you. I don't know why. There's only two numbers we're going to plot. So there's numbers one, two, and three, and they're plotted as a uh, as cones, because that looks fancy. Okay, So now we have this three-dimensional graph with cones in it to convey really only three pieces of information. And perhaps we're going to stipple them differently. Okay, We're going to have one that is filled in with hashes, one that's filled in with dots. This is really easy to do. There's lots of buttons to click. 
you can make figures like this. And, and maybe this one is filled with the horizontal stripes. Okay? And of course, because as long as we're <laughs> filling in our, uh, our cones with different, different uh, stipples, we're going to color them. Right? So perhaps these actually appear as different colors. And then there's also some lines along the back, lots and lots of lines showing the horizontal divisions in the data. Okay? Um, and then there's a legend, okay? which says each cone is labeled data series one. Okay? So this would be an example of something that has quite a lot of junk in the chart, OK? So if you look at the amount of ink we have just used to print this figure, basically the entire figure is filled with color, OK? The color doesn't really mean anything. There's only one series. This label doesn't really mean anything. Um, the fact that these are cones doesn't mean anything. And in fact, it can be sort, sort of misleading, right? Are we talking about the height of the cones to convey the data, or is it the volume of the cones that really matters? It's sort of unclear at this point, right? Um, there's also all of this shading. Maybe there's even shadows on these. Right? And so these are all examples of things that Tufti would caution us to avoid because it really just obscures the issue. Right? The bottom line is we have a bar graph. There are three numbers. The point is the third one is bigger than the second one, which is bigger than the first one. That's all there is to it. So if you took away all of the ink that's devoted to printing stuff that doesn't really actually convey data, what you're left is with something that's quite simple. So if we plotted this plot, According to Tufti's principles, you may end up with a relatively simple graph, graph like the following. Okay? And maybe to compare the heights of some of the, of the bars to make that more obvious, you could have a few lines in the back if you wanted, just a few, right? to tell us what the horizontal values are. You would label these, of course, but that would be it. Right? There's no point to shade them different colors. There's no point to shade them at all, really. Um, and there's definitely no point of shading them different stipples of some sort. Okay? So it's this progression of thinking about, of making a graph, uh, making some visual way of representing this information, and thinking to yourself, well, what do I actually need? Are there things that are applying in my graph that doesn't actually convey any information? Um, and that one may be able to do without, right? And, and this question is not as, sometimes not as simple as Tuffy would have you believe that it is, right? Because remember, we're talking about communicating data to people, right? And it depends on your audience. So for example, if you are writing a very technical paper about a very technical subject, and you are making a figure that's supposed to convey some very detailed methods of something that you did very, very carefully, and you're talking to experts in your field who may be doing very similar analyses, you might want to meticulously label different parts of your graph, right? So you might, in this particular very simple example, you might actually want to put the numbers here, right? Exactly what this is. This is 2.001, this is 3.125, and this is 1.95, or something like that, right? It might be important for you to add details to this graph. However, if your audience is more of a, you know, a general audience, let's say that this particular graph is supposed to be printed in more of a magazine article like Scientific America or something, then it may be superfluous to actually add in those numbers, especially to three decimal places after the, after the decimal point. So these are decisions that you have to make by thinking about who you're trying to talk to and what the story you're trying to tell them is. Right? So the key here is to, after you do the analysis, after you get past the data exploratory stage, you're, you're at a position where you're trying to tell your audience a story. And you're always trying to tell your audience a story. Right? You're trying to represent the data fairly, perhaps in multiple ways, but you have something that you want your audience to see easily. And so what you're trying to tell determines your design decisions in terms of how do you plot the same information. There's always an infinite number of ways of plotting it, but how do you tell the story in the most clear way possible so that as far as possible your audience looks at your figure, understands it relatively quickly, and is able to come to the same conclusions that you did.